Welcome to Wargaming Recon. I am your host, Jonathan J. Reinhardt. Wargaming Recon is the only member of the Troll in the Corner podcast network to discuss historical and New England gaming. This is episode 148, Miniature Wargaming the Movie with Joseph Pittington. So as you might guess, whether you are a new or a long-time listener alike, we have a very special guest in this episode. So before I go any further, I want to make sure that you know that you can get to the show notes for this episode by visiting wargamingrecon.com slash WR148. And the reason why I say that is we're going to talk about all sorts of things and we'll have links and stuff. It's hard to remember all of that. You might be at the gym or painting or commuting to or from work. You're not going to remember all these web addresses. Just remember the show notes, wargamingrecon.com slash WR148. And that'll have all the stuff that we talk about here today. So without further ado, I want to welcome our very, very special guest. He's director of this amazing documentary. I am, of course, referring to Joe Pittington. Joe, how are you today? Yeah, very well. Thank you very much for having me, John. I am so very excited for this uh, time to <laughs> chat with you. I, I was made aware, actually, of uh, your project because of uh, a friend of the show, Mr. Henry Hyde. He had put something up on social media, and it was this new like headshot of him, and he's trying to pose himself just right. And I'm tr trying to think, what is he doing? Does he have a new book coming out? No, like I think I would have known about that. Is he going to be in a movie or TV? No, that doesn't make any sense. He doesn't do that. And then next day he says, well, I'm attached to this project. <laughs> it was really cool. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I've been working with Henry uh, on on this film, so um, I'll I'll let you I'll let you tell your audience a bit more, and then I'll I'll take it away and you know tell you more about the documentary. Sure. So I, I know some of you who are listening or watching live because we do record these episodes live. You might not have seen how uh, Miniature Wargaming the movie has exploded over social media for those of us who are in the wargaming hobby. In, it has. Everyone is talking about it. Everyone from War Games Illustrated, uh, Miniature War Games Magazine with Battle Games, WSNS, uh, everyone from GW on down has something to say about this. And mostly it's that they're excited about this project. And when I had first seen it, I thought, okay, so there's going to be a documentary and I, I want to learn more about it. And all the information was directing towards this website, which I get to say, it's beautifully designed and very easy to navigate. And I, I was able to tell there's going to be some sort of Kickstarter about it and some way to raise money. And uh, eventually I was able to get to a link for the Kickstarter. And then I was just, I was blown away by what I saw because it not only is the Kickstarter project, you can tell how well it's thought out and uh, devised, but you have all sorts of really wonderfully talented people who are going to appear and, and just really interesting things that you want to do with this project. And so immediately I wanted to know more about you and about what you were doing with this and, and why, because it, after all these years of wargaming, it's been around, you know, since the, before the seventies yep. that like, why hasn't this been done before now? And uh, of course it has to be something you're passionate about too, because otherwise why would you want to choose it as a subject? But why don't you tell us just, about this and why and how did you get into it? Yeah, um, well, all those questions that you just asked yourself are kind of the questions I asked myself um, when we decided to make a feature film about miniature wargaming. Uh, I kind of fell into it, to be honest. I've been in miniature wargaming for years, uh, 15 odd years, if not longer now. Um, I remember like most people getting into wargaming walking down the streets looking through a shop window and seeing a few models and pandering at my parents to buy them so i could go and paint and uh i was just and i've always had that kind of niche to or uh, kind of i've wanted to be involved in that the industry from a very very young age so go down a few years um obviously you fall out of you know in and out with life um because of the industry and stuff so but i fell back in love with it um a year or so ago if not longer um and it started about being a small documentary a 10 minute documentary that was going to follow going to a painting competition and it was a miniature painting competition so uh one of my friends who works in kind of this industry as well 
he approached me and said, look, I want to get do more documentary stuff. Um, and I said, well, why don't you document, we'll do, make a little documentary about going to this point painting competition. So we contacted um, the people that were running it and we basically said, hey, would you mind if we came, filmed um, the tournament and stuff? And the more we spoke to them about it, they were just like, well, have you, why don't you speak to someone else and maybe get some interviews about kind of pro painters and get like their side of the industry. And it's just kind of snowballed. And when I look back now, it, it has literally it's just been a massive progression. And when I did a bit more research into it, I just couldn't believe that no one's ever made a documentary or any real feature that hasn't been written article about this industry before. And it's it's huge and it's million literally millions of people play it all around the world. So the more digging I did into it and the more people I spoke to and speaking to Henry Hyde was, as you said, was kind of one of the big factors for me. Just um, and he told me about his book that he wrote and he sent me a copy of his book and I read through it and I just that was the thing we were like, right, we're going to make this into a proper feature film. We're going to get a proper crew involved. It's not going to be, you know, a small 10 minute video because there is so much here. And this story people need to know. And I'm passionate about it and I wanted to tell the story. And I knew that I could tackle this from my point of view that isn't because all the other videos and small things that you've seen, it's it, there's a purpose behind it. So it's normally uh, another company doing it to promote their stuff, or but it's never been tackled from a, a passionate person's point of view that is just, let's just highlight the whole industry, what's amazing about it, the history, um, the companies involved, exclusive interviews. So that's kind of how it started. And what it's become today is, yeah, a, a 90 minute feature film documentary about this amazing hobby that is uh, miniature wargaming. One of the things that really drew me to uh, your project in the documentary was the more I read about it, the more that it was clear that it is an unbiased approach to it. And whether or not uh, a bias is positive or negative is not something I'm going to get into, but some of people who are in the hobby, some hobbyists have been concerned over the years with some of the companies more and more, say, buying up the magazines and controlling some of the information sources to it. And on one hand, I, I think it's great because then you're able to get that inside look at what those companies are doing. Um, Games Workshops Magazine, uh, White Dwarf, for example, is something that when I was first getting into Wargaming, I, I went with GW for stuff, and I loved being able to read in their magazine about all the inside stuff that you wouldn't be able to get if it was necessarily apart from everything, because they yeah. can just say, oh, we want so-and-so in-house to talk about this. And, and yet, uh, I know people were really concerned when War Games Illustrated was purchased by Battlefront and how, when it became like an arm of that, although, I mean, it, it is separate to a certain degree. Uh, but I also like how you have that independent approach to things. You look at something like Battle Games Magazine, which is um, through Henry's um, new role in Miniature War Games Magazine, it's kind of merged with it. So you get that completely independent view of things and being able to kind of look at it from both ways is great. But I think that um, there would probably not be as much excitement and positive reaction to what you're working on here if it was we are 100 percent sponsored by companies a b c and d and this, and we're going to talk about what they do in, in here and not so much as this is what it's like coming from a, a hobbyist who's into wargaming yeah yeah so for those of you that don't know and haven't seen the project uh, i'll give you a brief kind of synopsis of what the film's about so uh, Miniature War Game the movie is a, going to be a 90 minute long documentary film that will have exclusive interviews with people like Rick Priestley that you'll know from 40k um, and he's also worked for a lot of other companies, done his own thing. We've also got Mike and Lan Perry that are two amazing sculptors probably that for me meeting them was kind of a, but we'll go into that later on. Uh, so we've got the sculptors, we've got the game designers and then uh, we've got loads of different people we've got like Paul and John from Warlord and we wanted to approach it from like you said a non 
uh, the angle is to try to cover as much as possible. So we have uh, interviews with people from Warlord Games. We have Hawk, Guild Ball, um, obviously War Games uh, Illustrated, and so many more. Uh, we've also got Outlaw Miniatures. Um, that's obviously an American company that did do Wild West Exodus and also Battle Foam, so we've also got that. We've also got Foreground we're going to cover for the terrain side. Um, so we're going to be doing an overview of the industry. So that's kind of, uh, so we have all these amazing exclusive interviews. And the other part, the film's broken into four sections really. So you have exclusive interviews and then you have the history. So we're going to be covering with Henry where this where this came from, how it's evolved to what it is today, and also in the past 10 years, how it's kind of evolved and transformed from more of a... Um, there's a lot more... I don't know how to word this. Not commercial, but you have uh, a lot of franchises and um, IPs being picked up, for example, like Alien vs. Predator, Judge Dredd, um, DC Comics, um, Star Wars, all these things have now, but, and that's kind of developed in the last 10 years, so we're also going to be covering that in the history of how it's kind of evolved. And then we wanted to show the hobby side and the tournament side, and I've approached this after many conversations with people from different companies that it's very boring, and I'm sure all war gamers know, to it's not very interesting to watch people roll dice for half an hour. So I've approached this by following two uh, rookie gamers basically competing their first ever tournament. So we follow them preparing for the tournament, so they prepare together, they do the painting, they try lists out, and then they go on the road and they go to one of the UK's largest gaming events, and then they compete at the tournament. And so we're covering the hobby side with that. Um, and also the other thing we I want to cover is the kind of pro painter side and also how the internet has kind of changed. So things like Kickstarter coming over, so people like Gilball wouldn't even exist if it weren't for things like Kickstarter and communities, how they've been built because of the internet. So all these things are going to be jam-packed into a 90-minute film. Um, and we're going to try to cover as much and as in-depth as possible. It, there's just so much there. It, it sounds as if there's enough content uh, for you to be able to do like a mini series, really, that and you could do multiple 90 minute films just about it. And I, I can't imagine how much work it takes just for the 90 minute film. I mean, it, these episodes of Wargaming Recon are about an hour long, um, depending on who I have on as a guest. Some people uh, enjoy speaking longer than others. It, uh, I know I what work it takes for me to do. With that, just as you know, a hobbyist podcaster, this is not what I do for uh, my real job or not how I pay the bills necessarily. But I mean, I've been doing this since 06 and just talking about uh, something I love. And so knowing how uh, what I do with this and what you, you and your team will have to do uh, to make it look so polished and professional. And because it, it is, it, it's something not only that you're passionate about, but you're creating a real valuable end product that I think is going to be something that people will be able to get and look at from years now and just say, oh, look at this. This actually tells the story of what we love. And I, I love how you're actually not just going to talk about the history and talk about the different um, companies involved with it, but that you're really going to do that storytelling aspect with those two new to Wargaming and what their tale is as they are trying to reach their goal. Yeah, definitely. And one of the other things that I haven't mentioned yet is Warlord Games have also given us exclusive access to document their whole process. So that's another thing because obviously a lot of people people don't see what goes into bringing their these games to your you know to your tabletops. And uh, Warlord have been amazing. We've sat down. We're going to basically cover the whole process from concept art all the way through manufacturing to the end product. Um, so that is kind of really exciting because you get to see, you know, artists coming up with the ideas, then sculpting them, and then putting them together, and how they, you know, how these little miniatures are made. And um, we're also going to be doing three ups, so how plastics uh, 
uh, also made now because um, it's obviously a completely different process. So that's really exciting and that's something I really think a lot of war gamers would be really interested in, as well as all the other stuff. Um, but we, I'm trying to get in there, you know, we're trying to cover as much. So if you're an old school gamer, um, we're going to be having, you know, we're going to be talking to Henry and other people about that are from the old school gaming. Um, but if you're a new school gamer, we have companies like Guild Ball, um, and if you just want to know about the process, and if you're just interested in the story and seeing two guys' journeys, we've got it all in there. So, Or if you just want to see some interviews, so we're covering as, as much as possible. So you, you've mentioned some of the people who will be interview subjects on it. You, you mentioned, um, and I know we'll talk more about them later on, but who are some of the people who you're going to have on to interview, but you haven't made public yet. Anyone you want to announce or you can announce um, at this point? That hasn't been public. Um, so the thing, our, our website's up at the moment, so everyone that's on the website at the moment, there is a few other people, um, but not that we can. We are still in talks with other people, um, and I wouldn't want to obviously make it public just in case it didn't happen. So, um, But yeah, we have on the website, I think we've got maybe 12 people on there at the moment. Um, and that's obviously the Perrys, Rick Priestley, um, John Stallard, Paul Sawyer, Henry Hyde. Um, and then we also have um, Rich from um, Guildball. Um, and then I'm just trying to think who else we've got. We've got so many other people. Um, we obviously will be um, interviewing Hawk. They're not on there yet. Um, who else? Um, we are in talks with a company in Spain, and I'm sure if I say that, people will know the company. Um, but that's as much as I can give away. Um, so that will be an exclusive interview. Um, and also we'll be interviewing people at Outlaw Miniatures, so we'll be coming over to the States to cover the state side as well. So this really isn't kind of international thing, and that's where we get to with the Kickstarter. So at the in the Kickstarter video, you mentioned that you've actually spent a lot of time on this project already, but that uh, the Kickstarters kind of help ramp it up to the next level. What are some of the things that you've already done in uh, some of the specific areas that you're really hoping the Kickstarter will help um, you to accomplish? Yeah, so at the moment we filmed, um, we've, we've already started filming. Um, this process has been going, it's actually really funny, when the day we launched the website, it had been a year to that day that we'd been started the process. So we're even a year in already. Um, so that was kind of, and it wasn't, a, it was just a coincidence, we didn't plan for that, it was just one of those things. Um, so yeah, we have filmed um, the the tournament side. So we followed the gamers. They've gone. They've competed, and um, we've done that. So what we're now trying to raise is because at the moment it's being self funded. I'm actually self funding the film. Um, so we don't have obviously because the problem with independent filming as soon as you get um, finances from elsewhere, you get obviously people want to put their vision on it. Um, so that's why I've tried to keep this as, as uh, I guess, low budget as possible when it comes to I don't want to get a company basically. And we have had offers of companies saying, well, we'll give you X amount of money. Um, and that's kind of what I don't want to do. So that's why we've come to Kickstarter. Um, so we're trying to raise, and we already have hit our goal, but the more money we raise, the more content and the more the more professional the look, because we do have a team that work and they've worked, it, they've got years and years in film and TV, um, but things that do cost money that we're trying to raise money, so the whole film, once it's all filmed, we are about, I'd say, 30% of the film has already been done, um, so we still need to finish 70% of the filming, so that the money from Kickstarter will raise to get obviously crew and equipment on set, so that's going to be that's what part of it's covering. And then after all it's been filmed, we're going to be spending money on obviously getting it edited. Um, we have we're having the whole film professionally scored, so we have a composer that is going to be writing all the music for it. Um, and then we also have the whole film is going to be color graded, um, so that will be sent off to an external company. And that basically just 
uh, really color grading really helps give um, the feel and the kind of atmosphere as well as the music to and it blends everything together um, so you could be shooting on three different types of camera and if you put raw footage next to each other you can tell it's different but then using color grading it puts everything kind of so it looks like it all belongs together in the same film so that's also part of it um, and so far we've done amazing on Kickstarter we've already hit our goal we hit our goal within the first week we have over 150 backers already um, from all over the world um, and the next step is stretch goals because I've had because my goal is to once it's all made is to take it to film festivals and that's where a chunk of the money from Kickstarter will go because to go into film festivals it costs you have to basically pay for entries and it can range from 20 to 200 dollars depending on the film festivals to enter so that's another thing and because I want this to as many people to see it as possible film festivals is a real it's the best outlet for independent film um, because all you have to do is have somebody that sees it and really believes in it and you could they could say I'm going to distribute this worldwide and get it into as many people and off that you can there's just so many avenues and that's my goal I want to get this it's not about for me making the money it's making a v amazing documentary that myself that I would like to see and I'd like to watch because I am interested in it and I want to get that into as many people's households as possible so that's kind of why we're going down the film festival route so obviously any of my longtime listeners know that I don't have anyone on the show and I don't talk about any product that I don't personally believe in. And the fact that I'm having you here is because I completely love what I've seen for both your Kickstarter project and for the documentary. And I think that you're fully capable of making something amazing. So of course, I'm hoping that people who listen to your time here with us are going to go and go to the Kickstarter and will back it. Why don't we talk a little bit about specifics with the Kickstarter project? I know it's funded, which is great, uh, but stretch goals, like you said, that's a way where a project can really shine. Uh, why don't we talk maybe about the funding levels, what people get at different backer levels, okay, yeah. and some of the, uh, the cool stretch goals and extra perks and things that are pertaining to it. Okay, yeah, definitely. Um, so we have uh, quite a few number of different rewards. So we have the the cheapest one is five pounds, so that basically is a just a massive thank you, and your name will be added to the website um, as just supporting the project. And then the the better ones, obviously, um, ten pound, you get a digital download of the film. So that is, you will now receive a ninety minute film, a digital download of it, and because we've hit our first stretch goal, you'll now also get an added twenty minutes of bonus material on top of that. And then we've got, you can own a physical copy, so you've got a Blu-ray DVD in there, and we also have a special edition box set that comes with both a, a Blu-ray and DVD, and also comes with a special edition miniature that, uh, for those that know more about the industry, uh, H.G. Wells um, wrote a book quite a few years ago called Little Wars. Yes. And um, I've been, I've had the real, the honor and privilege I've been speaking to the people that own the license now because obviously he sadly passed away um, I've been speaking to him and the family have given me permission and to use his use talk about the book in the film to also use images of him and one of the things that we spoke to and they have now given me license to do is produce a miniature of HG Wells as a special edition like little gift to go with it so and then that's really exciting when I got that so that's kind of the the one that I would really say for everyone because it is a licensed uh, figure I know a lot of companies have done uh, likenesses of other famous people but they don't have the license to do it if that makes sense uh, they they produce it, but this is an official licensed product, so and it will only be available through the Kickstarter. It will never ever be produced. Um, I've spoken to them, and they've never given permission for somebody to make a miniature before. So to have that is just amazing. Um, and then you get the more the higher options. Um, we're going to be doing a kind of Google Hangout. You also get all the ones from 
uh, from now onwards will also include the special edition box set, so everyone's aware. Um, but you have the more expensive ones. We're going to be doing a Google Live Hangout, so you will be, and it's limited, so you will basically be able to come in and we'll just talk. You can just talk to us. Um, it will be me, some of the other crew members, some of the people we're, we're interviewing, so you might be able to have, you know, I won't say who, um, but we'll have some other people uh, involved so you can come and just talk and ask questions. And then we have higher ones where you can actually come, and there's only five available. Uh, you can come to the UK film premiere, and that will be in the Nottingham area, um, and it, it's a film premiere, so we'll have we're inviting all of the cast and crew, so there'll be people from all over the industry, so if you're really into kind of your miniatures and you want to, it gives you a chance to just sit, watch the film, you get to see it before anyone else, you get to see it on the big screen, but not only that, there's going to be an after party where you can, you just stay, you can have drinks, you can talk, you can, it, it gives you that opportunity where you wouldn't, you wouldn't have it anywhere else, um, because the only place you get all these people together would be at an event, um, so yeah, that is, we're inviting pretty much everyone that will be involved in the film. Uh, so we don't know who will turn up on the day, obviously, it depends, but we'll, we'll make it on a weekend, and that's something you can come to. And then the other one, the highest one, is an exclusive producer. You get everything I've just mentioned, and also you can get to see the film. Before anyone else, you get to see a rough edit, so that's before it's been colour graded. You basically get to see, and you get your input, so you can say... I like this, maybe you should change a little bit. Um, and the other part is you will get interviewed, and part of that interview will make it into the final film. So if you are you want to be in a feature film that will be seen in film festivals around the world, then you've got your opportunity. So that was just one that I really wanted to give um, for people that really are as passionate as me. Uh, and it's the kind of only opportunity that you'll get that I... I, I am aware of so yeah so they're the other ones and now we go into stretch goals um, and I'll let you cover kind of where we are at well I, I gotta say when I had looked at the project at first I, I remember contacting you through Kickstarter and because I was curious if the physical um, product levels well, where like you get either the blu-ray or the dvd uh if they came with the digital download because it, it wasn't mentioned it was a separate backer level and i'm thinking well in, in this day and age people want digital downloads but someone's going to want something that they can hold on to right you want that physical commemorative thing you can say i get the dvd i get the blu-ray of it and, and i can pop it into my play and watch it but you might not be where your player is and you might want to, you know, you're at a gaming convention for example and you want to show people uh who are in your room you want to say Hey, buddy, you should look at this film that I got. You need to go and you need to back it. You need to buy it and, and take a peek at it with me. And you pull it up on your computer. And I thought it would be neat uh, to be able to do that. And, and you gave me this really clever uh, response where you're like, well, I'll just wait and see for those stretch goals there. <laughs> so I, I would check every day and be like, I don't see stretch goals. Like some Kickstarter projects, I put all the stretch goals up at first. Some, they do a, a little at a time. And I, I would, I'd look and I was waiting, 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 and just trying to see what are these stretch goals, which is ingenious on your part because you got me coming back every single darn day <laughs> to look at what you got going on here. And I'm like, okay, is do you get a stretch goal yet? What is it going to be? And so the fact that the first one's been met, which I know you're going to explain in a moment, but that the second one has been revealed, the second one, uh, this is going to sound odd. I'm even more excited for the second one than I am for the first one, but the first one's an amazing stretch goal. Don't get me wrong. It's just the second one lets me have my cake and eat it too, which is something here in America anyway we're all about. So <laughs> <laughs> why don't we talk about these two stretch goals? And I, I know um, that there's going to be more than these two. I, I don't know. I know you don't want to reveal what they are, but I don't know if you want to reveal how many potential additional stretch goals there might be uh, that people can kind of hope for and what kind of backing levels you're envisioning for those to get activated. Yeah, so when I approached the project, I because I've used Kickstarter before as for personal use, and um, when what I don't... Part of the thing with Kickstarter is exactly you get you look forward to what possible goal or unlock you could have. But I didn't want to pull it all out because people, 
that you don't get that excitement. You don't build that. Okay, well, what's next? Because you don't know, and you get that surprise of what it is. So we all I said when the project first went live, and uh, I just said there will be stretch goals. And as soon as we hit three thousand, our pledge goal, uh, you'll see the first stretch goal. And then from there on forwards, each time we hit our stretch goal, you'll see the next stretch goal. But you won't see the one after that, and you won't see that stretch goal until we've hit this previous stretch goal. And yeah, I've done that because it just gives people a bit more instead of just laying everything out and saying this is how much. And I, it's I guess it's my personal choice. I don't like seeing companies or people putting out. Okay, well I've got a goal for X amount, and but I've got. 10 stretch goals already lined up here or all of them to me part of it just thinks well why don't you just have that as your main goal um, so for me stretch goals are, really are it's just an added uh, bonus to help the film and to give back so the first one that is just being unlocked because we've hit the goal we hit it last night so you will if you back this project you will get it now and that is um, an additional 20 minutes of extra footage this is I, when I was came up with the concept, this is the one thing that I was most excited about because I'm going to have so much amazing content fitting into 90 minutes. And there's a reason the film's only going to be 90 minutes is because of film festivals and doing things with physical copies of DVDs and Blu-rays, shooting at the resolution that I'm shooting at because I'm shooting everything in 4K. So um, you've got so much information, putting it onto a physical disc or Blu-ray, you can only hold a certain amount at a certain resolution. So and that's about two hours on a DVD, on a traditional DVD. So 90 minutes, it gives me an hour and a half um, of the film. That also went in nicely with film festivals because when you're applying to get in, it's nice to have it at a round number. So you, you, you know, including you either want to have an hour an hour and a half, two hours. Um, I knew because I wanted the the added extra, it was going to be an hour and a half. So for film fe festival pr uh, purposes. So then having the 20 minutes of content, you, you know, people are going to want to be able to see extended interviews, and you'll you'll be getting that now. You'll be able to see. Uh, Part of it will also have kind of the behind the scenes things that you wouldn't see that didn't make it bloopers and etc. So I really wanted to do that because me personally, uh, I, I enjoy those things. When I buy a DVD or I buy a Blu-ray or a special edition, they're the things that I like to watch. Um, so that's what I want to give people. So that got hit last night, and today we revealed the first, and you're you're the first person that's probably um, now seen it because it literally just got uploaded about an hour ago, <laughs> um, and it has. So if you haven't seen it, go to the website and you just scroll down. You can see it. There will be an update. I haven't even been able to get around to give the update out. Um, and I spoke to John about that just before we went on air. We've had a few problems, um, time restraints, I'll say. Um, but yeah, so the next. Uh, goal is actually there's two rewards um, and it's going to be five thousand pound that's the next goal so when we hit five thousand pound you'll get these goals and like uh, John was saying he when he emailed me do you get a digital download when you have a physical copy well you don't but now if you hit this goal you will so every physical copy of the film will now include a digital copy of the film and this is for two reasons exactly like you said um, it's nice to be able to have it on your computer so you can go and share it with friends but also I know people like a physical copy if they don't have um, you know capabilities to plug their computer into their TV for example now you have both and if you wanted to gift it to someone if you just are like well okay well I've got this digital download I've got a physical copy I'm not going to use it I'll give it to a friend I'll share it with someone else. So you now basically getting two films for the price of one. Um, and but that all goes back to that all goes back to me getting. It's not. It's about getting as many people to watch this as possible. Um, and it. And if you're not a war gamer, and I know obviously your uh, shows for mainly war gamers, but if you're not uh, a war gamer, this film is really. It's not just. It's going to be about miniature wargaming, but I, it's, I want it so other people can watch it and really go, you know what, that isn't, that is, that's cool, maybe I should try this. It doesn't have the stigma of what 
a lot of people still think that the industry is like um, and the hobby's like and that's kind of the one thing that I really want to if I can change anything in the film um, and people's persona when they watch this um, and that's why I'm going to film festivals as well because people that go to film festivals I would say maybe I'd be lucky if there's 1% of them are war gamers um, but being able to watch this and after watching it say you know what that was that's I'm going to try that I'm going to look into that that's not what I thought it was, and it's not the stereotype what everyone thinks it is. So that was the first one. You get a digital download, and the second perk that is really, really exciting is I've uh, one of the smaller companies that are uh, involved, uh, Chris, I was speaking to him last week, and he wanted to help in some way. Um, so we teamed up together, and it is a special edition miniature and it is a dwarf that you can't buy off his website and it will basically come with the special edition so not only are you getting one special edition miniature that's a HG Wells you'll be getting a dwarf and if you go onto the Kickstarter you can see the and it's a hand sculpted out green stuff the traditional way and it will come in metal I actually have one somewhere uh, that he sent me um, I don't know it's here somewhere um, but yeah so uh, but you'll be able to see uh, in the update video you'll be able to see the physical um, miniature as well I, I did bring it and put it here so I could actually show you but yeah so that's it that's the next stretch goal the next ones uh, I say in my update um, I don't want to give too much away about the stretch goals as I was saying but I've had a lot of international people contact me about having subtitles so there will be subtitles, so if you are, if English isn't your first language, there is four languages that we will be trying to uh, get the film subtitled into. Um, they, and I, I can tell you what they'll be, they'll be German, Italian, French, and German, Spanish is the other one, German, Italian, French, and Spanish, and they are the four. Um, the reason they're stretch goals and not is because obviously I've, I don't speak any of those languages fluently. I have to pay somebody to translate them, um, and that takes time. So, but they will be as stretch goals, and I will include other things. The people that um, you know, if if you if you're just happy with it, I didn't want it to be it reliant on just people from those countries to back it. So there will be including in those subtitles. There will be other added perks as well so um, one of the things that i was intrigued about was that uh, special limited edition hg wells uh, miniature um, do you happen to know um scale or posing who's going to sculpt it um, uh, any of those kind of details I, I know that might be of interest to people yeah so it's going to be 28 mil um 28 mil for me is i I think that's the scale where you can get a lot of good detail and that's kind of, it's for me, and I think people would like that. Um, I didn't want to go, I, I didn't want to go too much bigger because I like it to be miniature. So it will, it will, it will be 28 mil scale, but it will probably be roughly 30 mil because uh, most of them are these days. Um, so yeah. yeah, heroic twenty. Heroic. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> heroic. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's going to be twenty-eight mil. Um, we, I can't say who's going to sculpt it um, because there's we have three people that have offered to do that, um, but the it will be twenty-eight mil. We're going to be it's going the pose is going to be H. G. Wells holding a, another miniature, so that is going to be the pose. Um, and who's going to be producing it? Uh, I don't know yet. Uh, Prodos Games were meant to be um, producing it, but um, I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm unsure at the moment. They wanted to know quantities beforehand, so I'm going to do that afterwards. Um, so obviously, because I don't know how many I'm going to have to produce. So um, it, but it will be it will be an amazing sculpt, and I the people that will be working on it um, that we have in line to do it are amazing sculptors so but that was one thing that when we released the Kickstarter we had an idea in mind um, and 
I didn't want to put out a, a definite design because it's not a definite design. It's still it's still in the works, but I can guarantee you it's going to be an amazing piece. People love a good miniature, and I presume it'll be some sort of metal. And you like that heft in your hand. You can pick it up. You can look at it. It's um, fun and easy to paint for people who are interested to uh, do that sort of stuff. You can put it on display. You can bring it with you or, or use it for a variety of reasons. It, it, it's just it's a really cool idea uh, to be able to uh, kind of bring it back in to one of the um, founding fathers of wargaming, so to speak, it, and just kind of tie it all in. Uh, so you're paying homage to the past, but you're also moving forward with all these cool ne new technologies and stories and everything, which is really amazing. Uh, one thing that I, I really enjoy about what you're doing is um, my wife, is not a war gamer and she doesn't necessarily understand you know what i do and why and uh it, it, we've been married for um almost five years now and um i remember there was this moment uh after we got married and we were uh, gonna be moving into our first apartment and she was like okay so you know we need to pack up all our stuffs and everything and i had still been living at home and she's like well you should pack up any of your gaming stuff you want to bring because like you should bring it so you can game it, it i just looked at her and i was like if you only knew how much gaming stuff i had like she, she didn't really comprehend how much space this takes up because when you talk about miniatures i mean everything balloons out it's bigger and bigger so being able to say here's a documentary it's accessible it kind of explains what i do and it does it in a way that like the every person can just kind of sit and learn something about it i think it's great and then you, you're able to have the story of those two um people who are new to wargaming uh, and that's kind of like just a great analog for the viewer so that like my wife can sit down she can watch that and she'll be like oh that's interesting and then she's someone uh, and i know you had said you're into it too but she loves bloopers all that extra content on things and, and nowadays i mean everything streams right online on netflix or amazon or whatever but the downside to streaming is they never give you the special features and, and that's why i think things like blu-ray and dvd are still doing so well because that's where you get it. You don't get it from a streaming service, uh, but you can get it, you know, like for this film, you can get it in the digital download, get it in the physical thing. So she's someone, if nothing else, and I can say, hey, look at this. Here's some funny bloopers and extra stuff. And, and she'll that'll draw her in. And I, I should say for everyone, I, I, I keep on saying, oh, you know, my wife's going to look at this and I'm going to do that or whatever. But that's because I, I've backed this project. I, I believe in it. I, I put my money where my mouth is. And so I will eventually get a copy of the documentary. And, and so then I, I will make her sit down and say, hey, you should watch this and see what you think. But I, I think having that introductory aspect for it is really going to be helpful because uh, there's all this talk in the hobby about like the graying of the hobby and uh, wargaming dying out and all that kind of stuff. And I don't believe that's true. But still, it's a niche hobby. The, it, we might feel like there's a lot of us and, and there's a lot to talk about, but when you look around in the world and you see all these other things that are going on and the other more mainstream uh, hobbies, so to speak, we're still a small number of people. So to be able to kind of reach out to that uh, through like the film festivals and everything, I think is it's a great way to go. And just me personally, I think that it's even more valuable to your project here, not so much for the money, but just for spreading the word about it and reaching, like you said, as many people as possible and uh, kind of introducing it to people. This could be the gateway for many, many people to learn and discover the joys of wargaming. And I think that's a fantastic thing. Yeah, and, and that's kind of, that's one thing that I really want to, because I love this industry and I love this hobby and I have for many, many years. And I do think what stops a lot of people coming into it is the stigma still. I, I really believe, because I don't care who you are, if you, you could live anywhere in the world and if somebody gives you a nice weighted miniature that's really well painted and puts it in your hand, you are not going to be like, wow. Like, and it doesn't matter if you're into it, it doesn't matter what you do for a job, and you could, if you have some of the best sculptors and the best painters work together to do this thing, it doesn't matter, you can be anywhere, and this, you will still be amazed by it. And I think, I think the reason that, this industry suffers sometimes is because of the stigma and I think if people looked at looked at something like this they it, it could help it really could help break down those walls that 
are still there, and it's just not the case. Um, obviously, everyone's got its stereotypes, and you know there is, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you're doing; there'll still be stereotypes. But from what I've learned from this industry, I would say ninety percent of the people that I know are not in that bracket. They're not in that stigma. They they have very very good jobs. You wouldn't know. And I've spoken to many people that I wouldn't have met because if it wasn't for wargaming, um, you know just our social structure is completely different so I wouldn't meet them but because of this hobby and you meet people that you wouldn't normally meet from different lifestyles and you come together because of this amazing kind of thing that you both enjoy doing. It, uh, it, it's interesting that you say that actually because um, here in New England there's a, a strong presence of independent gaming stores, uh, ones that are not like an official, say, GW store, an official Battlefront or whatever. They're just, you know, tried and true. Someone decides they want to start up a, a store. And one of the beauties of it that doesn't necessarily happen elsewhere is we have the space where you can play games there in the store. A lot of them have lots of table space that you can play. So there's one that has been local to me and all of my friends have come from my going to that store from meeting one person in college and, and then going there and, and then meeting all these other people, the best man at my wedding, everyone. Uh, and it's a result of having spent time there from this hobby and uh, just getting to know all these different people who I would never have met otherwise and learning more about them and, and having this common ground, but being able to use that as a, a springboard to really talk about other things that are important and are interesting to us. So it, it makes it really interesting when I look at something like um, Wargame Soldiers and Strategy has done their great Wargaming survey again. And a question on there is like, what is the most important aspect of the hobby to you? And for me, it's always that social aspect, which is funny because I'm an introvert. I'm not supposed to get pumped up by spending time with all these other people, but it's the fact not about the game so much, but about spending that time with these other people. And it, it really, it's that icebreaker that sometimes you just need. So you can have this, well, I need a role, whatever, to do this or that, and I want to move my guys here, or the tank does that and stuff. But it's really about getting to know your fellow gamer and getting to know them uh, through that lens of having this common ground known as wargaming, but really to form those bonds with one another. And it, 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 when it happens, it's beautiful. Yeah, definitely. And also, uh, I was speaking on a, a, another show, and we were talking about how the internet has built this amazing community. So, because it's not just about, this hobby isn't just about gaming. And I would say probably only 10% of my uh, part, love of this industry is actually gaming related. Everything else is you build this community and things like Facebook and everything, I, you have these amazing forums and these platforms now where if you want to and you want to see the newest releases or if you just want some information if you don't understand a rule set and you can ask someone if you, I play a lot of uh, bolt action personally so you know if you don't know I play German so if I don't know what camo pattern my Falschenjäger should have I can just speak to someone and they know and it really has built this amazing community that isn't just about picking up models and pushing them around it's now become a lifestyle of okay if I've got some free time even if you're on the way to work you'll be on Facebook and you just see someone posts a picture of a tank and you know you can you still have that hobby side and that's really interesting for me uh, to see kind of and that's that has been a big change in the industry and I think it I think it's becoming a lot more positive and I think with all these things like the internet and um, geek chic being now cool and all those things coming in it's really changed and a lot more people um, you look at the board game industry that's gone huge in the last five years and it's getting it's it's just another introduction into okay well I push uh, zombie side models around well okay well that's a small little introduction it's a board game and now I can go into miniatures maybe oh I enjoy painting these and you there's a lot more different aspects and I think it's I think kind of this documentary personally has come, it's come at a perfect time of you get to finally see the shift um, and we're actually, we get to see it firsthand. Um, so I, I just think it's amazing and 20 years ago you wouldn't have, it. you would only know the people if you could go and find a local store uh, and you might be able to get a game in. 
so it was a lot harder but now it's obviously changed massively and it's it's a constant it's every day you have it in your life you're right and it's really interesting i think how the internet has been able to break down some of the distances uh, for war gamers for example when i wanted to get into historical war gaming which is really how i spend most of my wargaming time now when i play games it's it's historical not so much uh, any of the sci-fi or the fantasy stuff uh uh then former co-host of the show was like oh you know you should get into this game called black powder i think you'd like it and you should like pick up the rule book and decide what you want to do and and get into it and so i was like okay so i, I got the rule book and then i was like what the heck do i do from here and i was so confused that the only person i could think of that i should contact was Henry Hyde, who at the time I was talking with to get him to come on and be a guest. And so I, God bless Henry, I, I sent him this really long, very detailed email that basically was like, what the heck do I do? <laughs> I'm lost, please help. And, and to his credit, uh, this was like in the early, early days of us getting to know one another. Here he is, this established magazine editor uh, who has contacts and friends, like big names in the industry in, in this, random guy from Massachusetts sends him this email that's as long as the Magna Carta. And he's like, okay. And, and so he replies. And, and if it wasn't for Henry, I wouldn't be doing historical war game. And if he hadn't taken the time to reply and say, you should look here and check out this website and look at that and, and just to share those resources. And that's something that wouldn't be able to have happened if it wasn't for the internet. And then of course, because of that, being able to to reach out with some of these other people, uh, I'm still flabbergasted that I, I'm connected on social media uh, with like these amazing people, uh, Alessio uh, Cavatore, and uh, just tons of these amazing game designers all over the place. It's just it's really cool to be able to see what they're working on, and, and not just what they're working on, but I mean they share what's going on in their lives, so you feel like you get to know them better. Uh, there was one point. I had ordered online some of the Perry Miniatures uh, American War of Independence uh, metal yeah. figures because I'm, I'm passionate about the Revolutionary War here. And so I had ordered some because my local game store didn't have what I wanted. And when the, the, the models came, they actually didn't have the right models in there. It was all but one of them was right. And so I contacted the, the place I ordered from, and they're like, well, this is how they are, and I can't do anything for you. Um, and for whatever reason, I decided I should contact Perry Miniatures directly and, and just see what they know about. It. Maybe it's a manufacturing <laughs> error. And again, without the internet, it couldn't have happened. I, I have the email here in front of me. I got a response from Alan Perry himself. And I was like, wait, what? Is, is it really <laughs> him? I, I've seen him in magazines and I, I have stuff he's made, but is he really personally responding to my email about that? And it was, and I was like, wait a sec. It's it just that, that awe moment. And again, like, if you look back without these great technological advancements, could I have written a letter and looked up the mailing address and stuff? And I could have, you know, in those old dark ages and probably could have got a response back, but it would have taken forever for any of this. And maybe I wouldn't have gone through the effort of doing it. It's just it's so easy now that you can have these just wonderful relationships and contacts with all of these amazing people. And it's because of just these cool new things that we're able to do. Heck, I mean, this show, you and I, we wouldn't be talking 15 years yeah. ago. No, yeah, definitely. Um, and, and I think that's why this is like really, really important. And obviously, there's so many things that, if, even if you want to watch a video, if you haven't, years ago, I remember when I first got into Warhammer, it was it was very hard to kind of understand, and if you didn't understand the rules, it, you could go into the shop and they might be able to explain it. But it was a lot hard. But now you can just go onto the internet and type in, and you can find videos, and or you can join a forum and you can speak to people, like as as you speak normally, and you can get response straight away. And I think it's that has helped so much, and it's. And because of it, I really do think it's made the industry a lot better and a lot stronger. Um, because like you said years ago, you might be able to, you'd get your monthly magazine and that would pretty much be it for your kind of 
knowledge or what's coming out soon unless you went to the shop. Um, but now you every day you can see what people are working on. And with social media, I think a lot of companies have become a lot more open. Um, I know obviously like the Perry's like you mentioned and Warlord and uh, Prodos and all these companies now they as they're working on things they'll they'll upload onto their social media and they'll share what they're working on so you get to see more of the behind the scenes than you would have 10 years ago so I think that's really interesting well and I think it's helpful too for the the companies because uh, I'm friends with a bunch of game designers and I know they get a real kick out of it when they see like a YouTube video where someone's playing their game or, or something that they made and, and they're seeing how the people are, are using it and maybe it's not how they intended it to be used, but they see what someone's doing in this new creative inventive way of doing it. And, and they're able to take that and, and get that really cool customer feedback that's not necessarily as intended as a, like your product is great or I hate what you did. It's just observing how people are playing. And then I think it helps them to make their games and everything better. And yeah. then in turn, it's helping us. So it's this really cool uh, dichotomy that exists that maybe people aren't necessarily aware of when they're, you know, um, putting a blog post out there or doing a YouTube video or, or posting in a forum or whatever, who's looking at it. Because oftentimes some of these individuals, they're not using the real information if they're with company XYZ, uh, but they're there and, and they're reading even if they don't post or even if they're not commenting. But they see what's going on and they're absorbing all of it. And at the end of the day, they're no different from you and I because they're passionate about this hobby too. They want to play the games. They're interested in all of it. So it, it just it, it's cool how we're able to communicate in that way. Yeah, definitely. And you've hit the nail on the head with people now. It's it's so much easier for people to get a better understanding and produce a better game now than what it was 20 years ago. Um, because you have that instant feedback. You can post a, a video or you can do something and you can get that instant feedback so you know what people like, what people don't like, what is working for you, what isn't. And I think a lot of the new newer companies have really taken that on board and their kind of structure and how they release rule sets and uh, has changed completely um, from what it would have been 20 years ago. And I think it's we've made a lot better games and produced better miniatures um, than what we would have if they didn't have this instant feedback from their customers. And at the end of the day, they're, they're in business to make the customers happy because by making them happy and producing good things, obviously they're going to have a successful company. Um, so I really think that has helped this industry and it's making, because of it, you now have so many amazing companies and so many amazing sculptors and painters and people that you wouldn't have seen because they don't work for a company. Like I see some of the most amazing artwork from people that aren't professionals or don't work, but they're just hobbyists and they really, really enjoy it. So that's kind of what I think is really interesting where I see, you see conversions, you see people that are just sculpting at home and don't actually do it. They just do it for fun. They do it for themselves and you get to see these amazing things that you wouldn't have seen ever before without the internet. It's kind of neat because when you do see that, some of those people, they end up with their own kind of following from other people like you and I who they're seeing this and they're thinking, oh, I can't wait for them to do their next whatever. And meanwhile, that person is just, I wanted to do this for a game. <laughs> and yet they do the next thing and they post it on their blog or on Facebook and it gets like 500 likes. Because people are like, that's really cool. Or you did a great job with the dry brush in there and the shading and this and that. And uh, I, I just, I love how it's, there's so much divisiveness in wargaming and a lot of discussions about what rules mean and everything. But at the same time, what I think is often overlooked is how much cohesiveness there is and how much we come together and how it's actually bringing us closer as a society, I think. And uh, when we understand one another better, especially across these great distances and from all over the world, I, I think it's, it just helps us and bleeds out into all these other areas that trickles down and just helps us to understand and make things better in other areas um, for everyone, which is, it's pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, so, I, I, I think it's amazing and obviously that's kind of one of the reasons why we're here and we're talking about the documentary so is because we have I have a love for this industry and that's what I want to share with kind of 
everyone else. Um, and I want to obviously let your listeners know that this, if if you haven't backed yet and you uh, are thinking that you shouldn't and you might not be interested, well, there will be, once the Kickstarter's finished, you there's certain things that you won't be able to get, like you won't be able to, and your money by backing the Kickstarter now is going, everything raised is going straight back into the film. So the more we raise now, the better film that we, that can be produced. Um, and the more content and the more, uh, the more, the more worldwide reach that we can have, we can travel to more countries than what we would if we only had a small amount, and we can enter into more film festivals than what we would if we had a smaller amount. So I really, that's kind of, if I can get anything across, would be to, you know, come and have a look at the Kickstarter, watch the video, see exactly what it's about, and if you're not sold on it, uh, I, I, I don't know what else to say, <laughs> um, because this is, it is the, if you're into this industry and you're into your hobby, this is something that is a must to see, and you it will be spoken about by the industry like it already has, because it is a big deal, and some people might think it's, it's maybe, you know, it, why, why is it getting, why are people talking about it, it's because, I spoke to Henry about this, and he was so relieved and so thankful that it's taken how many years that he's been in the war, it's somebody to take this serious and realize that this, there is a subject matter that is interesting. And it really is. Like some of the people, I've, I, when I went and spoke to Alan Perry, some of the stories that he has are just absolutely amazing. Some of the things that he's done that he would have never done if it wasn't for miniatures, and these are all things that you can learn that you would have never known, and if it wasn't for us doing this documentary, I, I know from speaking to a lot of them, they, they wouldn't share this, because there's no platform to ever have done it before, so I, if I can kind of, you know, sell the Kickstarter, that's kind of, I really hope people can, after listening to this, go and just check it out, see what it's all about, and get involved, because there's special miniatures that you wouldn't be able to get otherwise, and we are only got 14 days left, and it finishes on the 6th of December. So, oh. that's my plug. <laughs> I think there's a reason why it took less than a week for it to raise 3,000 pounds, which was its goal, why it's fully funded, why so many individuals are talking about it, why it's, it, it's blown up Wargaming social media all over the place. And, and it's because people know that this is not only going to be interesting and exciting and fun, but that it's quality, that you will regret if you don't support it and if you don't participate in this. So I, I got to say, I just want to echo that if you haven't backed it, back it. Uh, even if it's only for five bucks, uh, I think you're going to wish that you had backed it for you know the, the physical film, whether it's a DVD or a Blu-ray. You're going to wish that you had gotten that really e exclusive miniature there, the HGOL's one. But not everyone can afford all those, but it, it, you, you got to support this film because this is amazing. And down the road, you're going to say, you know, I, I wish I had. I wish I had gotten those really cool Kickstarter exclusives. There are Kickstarter projects out there, and uh, there's tons of them, and some are really good, some are really bad, some have issues. This has nothing but wonderful things happening with it, and it's not often that I gush about, well, that's not necessarily true, but it's not often that I gush like this about something, and, and I'm telling you that you need to support this film because, well, you need to, first of all, and if you haven't learned to trust me by now after uh, almost a decade of um, doing this with all of you, then... I don't know, but really, you got to put your support behind it because at the end of the day, when the documentary comes out and you get your finished copy of the film, you're going to sit down with a, a pint and, or a, a cup of coffee or something, and you're going to sit on your couch and you're going to lower the lights and put on the movie, and you're going to say, yeah, do you know what? I, I did the right thing, and, and you'll be able to have it for all these years to come so that you know you can share it with your friends or, or your your children if you have kids, and you can say, you know, this is what mom really was into. This is what dad was really into. Maybe you want to give it a try, and it's it's something you're passionate about. How many times in our lifetimes have we seen this happen? Never. So this is perhaps a once in a lifetime chance for you to be able to do that. And that doesn't happen every day. And you can support it for a variety of amounts. But like you said, Joe, for as little as $8 American, five pounds, 
gets you into uh, supported and you can start getting the really cool rewards for a little bit more than that. So I will have links in the show notes, which I mentioned at the top of the episode, uh, but I'll link to the Kickstarter so you can support it and all that kind of stuff. And I strongly, strongly encourage everyone to support it as much as you can and just get involved with this. There's a lot of people who have supported it, um, just about almost 160 people so far. Uh, but there's a lot more of us war gamers out there and you can find a few bucks. You can go without um, picking up your Starbucks or your Dunkin' Donuts coffee for a couple of days uh, so that you can help make this uh, become true and be a reality. Uh, Joe, are there any other ways that you'd like to share for people to stay up to date with the project and what, what you're doing and any of that yes. kind of stuff? Yeah, definitely. So um, not only with the Kickstar AU um, obviously backing the project and Obviously, the more money we raise, the better we can, uh, the better film that we can produce, and the more content we can have. But by the smallest amount, you get into the access of the behind the scenes. So, and you won't you won't be able to get this. There will be exclusive videos of as the film is being made. So, uh, production stuff. Um, you know, us going behind the scenes, sitting down, getting ready, uh, doing interviews all those things that you're going to get and you're going to stay up to date with uh, exclusive exactly what we're doing, where we are, where we're filming, who we're filming with. And so you're going to get, even if you back for the lowest reward, you're going to get all these things. So you're not just, not only are you obviously helping, supporting, you're getting more uh, information. And if you're into miniatures, you know, there's going to be things that you wouldn't be able to see. How often do you get to see behind the sets on any film or even where you can go into the lives and you know see behind the scenes of a lot of the people that we do we are going to interview um so that's kind of what if you have any kind of inkling into the industry please you know help back and even if you want to encourage people um and you have friends and you have family that exactly what john was saying that don't really understand your hobby or you want somebody to start playing with you. You can say, okay, well, I bought this, watch this, and that's what it's all about. And, you know, I'm sure it will help encourage people more into the industry. So if you're looking for a new gaming partner, that's a really good uh, kind of introduction into it. So these are all things. We have the website up. We're on Facebook. You're on Twitter. You can stay up to date with all the things. If you come over to our Facebook, we have so many giveaways every kind of at least every two weeks or we try to do one a week we do a giveaway one of the companies that we have on board will give us an amazing and we've had some amazing prizes Warlord Games just gave us their brand new Beyond the Gates of Antares starter set to give away Wild West S uh, Exodus gave us like a hundred and twenty dollar starter set two player starter set so come over you can like you can share and you can just enter in these competitions just by being liked on the page um, and also if you want more information about the film more information about the crew that are making it the uh, the special interviews uh, upcoming events so you know where you, where we'll be shooting that's all on the website, so and we keep that up to date. We have a blog that we try to do a weekly blog update, and that is not only about the film, but it's other people that are related to the film. So we're going to have like guest bloggers where they just come and just talk about whatever they want. Um, so we have Matt and Adam that have already done once, two of the guys that we're following. They talk about their experience filming it, stuff like that. And we also have the crew that have been working on it. So there's so much content. It's not just producing this amazing film. It's it, We're giving a platform where people can go. We have a blog. You know, People can comment, comment, people can talk. People can talk about their hobby. So there's so much there. It's not just producing this film, but producing everything for the community so yeah come on over have a look and stay up to date with everything well joe i want to thank you for spending this time with us here i know you are incredibly busy with <laughs> just all sorts of stuff uh friends of mine who've done kickstarters have basically said that kickstarter became their full-time job until the project was done and everyone got this stuff so i, I really appreciate uh, you spending this time with us here uh to do this live recording of wargaming recon and uh, of course, the the episode goes out. It's an, for our audio uh, at a later date. And if people are listening to this, well, you already got it, so that's great. And um, just thank you again for taking the time to be with us. This has been 
Uh, so much fun. I've been looking forward to this I interview ever since we set it up. So I, I really appreciate it. Yeah, well, no, well, thank you very much for having me. I, I, I really appreciate it. And thank you for those that have listened to me ramble on about this uh, amazing film that I'm going to make. <laughs> Oh, uh, as everyone always knows, um, no matter how busy you are in your lives, no matter how much you have going on, you always have to have some time. You gotta, you need to, you have to keep on gaming.